One of the molding details that I use a lot in the house I build are large reeded pilasters. We'll put them beside big openings. Sometimes we'll run them up the side of a fireplace, but it's a great detail. And it doesn't take a lot to make them if you've got a Woodmaster. It's one of the things I really like about the Woodmaster is the capacity. This is about an eight inch knife and I can set it up in the machine and in one pass, turn this piece of MDF into something that has incredible value when I put it in the house. Now, this is True Pan MDF. It's a really high grade of MDF, and it is gonna be a little bit hard on the knife, but what I've found is, even if I have to sharpen this knife a little bit more to create a paint-graded column, there's just incredible value in being able to do that in one pass to this machine. And if I ever get to the point where I had someone wanted, oh, maybe 30 or 40 of them, I'd probably go ahead and get them to grind me a carbide knife, which you can get from Woodmaster now. But for right now, I'm just going to keep using the steel knife and making them four, five, six at a time. Okay, the first thing I want to do to set this up is I'll just come back here and draw a center line. This is right at 12 inches. So I'll make a pencil mark at six inches. And I'll go ahead and run this in just a little bit. And when that pencil mark comes out the other side of the planer, I'm gonna slow it up. Okay, now I can see that. So what I'm gonna do is put the aluminum gib in there, put the head in, and this has an odd number, so this is the center reed. And you can certainly do this with fluted also. But in essence, I'm just gonna pivot that down and center the center reed on the pencil mark that I made. And now I'm ready to tighten up the knife, put in the counterbalances, and we'll go ahead and take what's a pretty plain piece of MDF and turn it into an incredible trim detail for a house I'm building. We're all set up here. There is one other little tip I wanna give you. And this works whether you're making molding or planing. If you'll hold up the end of the board a little bit, it helps overcome the fact that you're when you start into the machine, you're only going to be under one of the two feed rollers. So holding up a little bit on the end kind of helps keep pressure down until it, the board passes through and gets behind that second feed roller. And just the opposite can be true as the board is leaving. If you'll hold up a little bit as it's leaving, it'll also help keep the board down some. Now I'm gonna be running this pretty slow because we're taking a pretty big cut and uh, this is a little bit dusty, but the dust collector should get most of the dust. One of the things that I did do when I started running the material through is I actually sped it up a little bit because there's such a thing as run the molding too slow too. If it stays in one place, the knife might start to heat up the material. So when you start running, if you do see the material starting to burn a little bit, you need to actually speed up your feed rate. There's kind of a happy medium between going slow and getting a really smooth cut and going too slow and burning on a product like this. All we're going to do now to turn this into a really nice piece of architectural millwork is we'll add another piece behind it so it'll look like it's an inch and a half thick. It'll probably take about an inch and a half strip and add it to the back of it, glue it, and then it would start to look like a really thick, really impressive piece of trim. <laughs> 